Hey, y'all. Welcome to Bass Hub. We've been gone a little bit lately, had some Facebook problems and all other kinds of different issues and been gone a lot on the road. But tonight we want to welcome Ben Ballou from Fishing University TV show. I got to actually film with them recently and it was an amazing experience. Um, anyhow, I'll let I, I want to ask him a few questions, kind of get into this. So how are you doing today, Ben? I'm doing wonderful. Doing wonderful. I've been home for like two weeks after being gone like eight in a row. Holy so cow. I'm catching up on yard work and kid stuff and going to ball games and, you know, all that fun stuff. I got a 14 year old and a three year old who are upstairs. They may make an appearance at some point. You never really can tell. They're pretty feral at times, but, <laughs> uh, but no, everything's wonderful. So just to let you guys know, if y'all do not know this, he is Charlie Ingram's son-in-law. Um, and so I've I heard a lot about that being in the boat. I, I was paired up with Charlie and man, he he was great to fish with. I he reminded me of my grandpa, like my papa. <laughs> the whole time I was in there and I kept saying, Man, he's just like my papa. Kind of brought tears to my eyes. But you know, um, how is it being his son-in-law? Um amazing and pretty tough at the same time um i don't know whose job that i took over when i got in the family but i know i took a bunch of work off of somebody because all the time i'm working on electronics or moving boats around or something like that but he's like a second dad to me um we fuss and fight like like father and son um anna tells me my wife anna tells me all the time that i'm the favorite child in the family but uh but no, it you know it, it's a, it's tough at times being business partners and family members. But I couldn't ask it to work any better. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, you know he's been in the fishing business for a hundred years. You know he won. He was he was the first guy to win three tournaments in the same year, like the same tournament. Wow, year. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. The very first maybe Roland done it like one year ahead of him or something. But in eighty, I think it was eighty four. He won three, not consecutively, but, and they were spread out too. It was like one at uh, Mississippi River, one at Lake Martin, and one in somewhere else, Okeechobee or something like that. Um, but that really, you know, kind of set him up for success in the fishing business. And, you know, he's been fishing professionally ever since. And he, uh, wonderful, wonderful guy. Um, couldn't couldn't be more thankful to, to be a part of the family. <laughs> Somebody asked, have you sang karaoke or danced yet? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the time, Stephen, you can probably play the video if we have it and let everybody see it. So we'll see if it if it ends up popping up, if he ended up finding it. But yeah, so tell us about this this video, apparently. I have not seen it. Oh, you've not seen it? No. It, uh, uh, I even shared it on TikTok. I mean, really? <laughs> There it is. We'll let everybody watch it first. We just don't have audio. Yeah, we can't hear it. Yeah. Well, you can always sing it for us, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, we'll sing for we'll, ourselves. We'll do something totally different that we don't ever do. Um, I mean, I can if you want me to go get my guitar. It'll take me just a second. Hey, to go grab yeah, it. go get it. That will right, be a first. I like it. This is already starting starting so good. <laughs> so, Harvey, you caught fish, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, thank you. Did you go to the lake that you catch a whole bunch of dinks? Yeah. Nothing very big? Only the 10 inches that we always get to see you catch? No, we, we, we probably caught uh, five and a two and three quarter to three pound range today. Oh wow! Uh, they're all on beds. Uh, Joseph got to got to watch one and eat a uh, little methylate bait and yeah, I in, I in. Yeah, I, I knew you had beat him. I could just tell how Harvey was acting when I was talking to him. So he says. Okay, so we have been here about to sing his song. Hey, you you got it. Go ahead. So a little bit of background before I sing it. Um. You know, we filmed with, filmed with James Watson the same time we filmed with you. That's the week before the Classic. Yeah. And, 
um, you know, that I think the like Good Friday was when they announced that he was getting disqualified, whatever. Um, and like James knew it was coming, right? Like you don't sell the hats and the shirts and say the things that James said. Yeah. Without him knowing that it was coming. Uh, mm -hmm. Do I agree with it? Do I agree with him? everything MLF has done? <coughs> don't really want to get into it, but you know, yeah, it, it yeah. kind of is what it is. Um, yeah. You know, they've tried to change a bunch of stuff in the fishing business and some of it's worked, some of it hadn't, you know, they still need to be around. They're still a very qualified organization. So that happens. And then Brian new gets disqualified from the open at Santee. So I'm sitting around, just got back from a classic kind of, we've been gone 10 days or something kind of catching my breath. And, uh, I was like, there's always drama in the BPT. And it kind of hit me. I'm like, there's always drama in the BPT. It's kind of hard when your hat says FBD, like the Snoop Dogg song. <laughs> so I'm like, damn, that's pretty catchy. Like I made myself laugh, which yeah. <laughs> you know you really don't do. So I sat down, I wrote, I don't know, like half of the first verse or something. And then I called my wife and or my wife called. She's like, what are you doing? You know, I'm supposed to be catching up on housework because I've been gone 10 days. And I'm like, well, I'm writing a song. She's like, okay, whatever. So she gets home and I played it for her and she's like, oh my God, that's so funny. So she gets involved and she, uh, she wrote, you know, helped me write kind of the rest of the lyrics and then got in the video. Um, y'all check it out. It's on fishing you, uh, YouTube page on my TikTok. Uh, got like right at 50 or 60,000 views on it. That's right awesome. Now. So here we go. Always drumming the BPT. It's kind of hard when your hat says FBD, but what's in somehow, some way? Keep saying funky ass shit nearly every single day because he made a little something for the G's. Sold some hats and t shirts. There's a derby in the morning and worldwide still jumping because he was made to stay home. All the people on Facebook just bitching mo, but I'm damn sure glad they got off a life scope. Now Bass is DQ, Brian New, said he blew out of bed. You know he interfered with another angler. That's what Upshaw said. <laughs> well, he went to the Bass Appeals Board, screaming, what, what, but he was ignored. Now we're rolling down the bank, skipping Sanko, sipping on G-Juice. Laid back. Got my mind on my money and my money on my mind. Sipping <laughs> down the bank, skipping Sanko, sipping on G-Juice. Laid back. Got my mind on my money and my money on my mind. <laughs> That's awesome. So I love it. I didn't know I was going to get a concert. That is awesome. So Anna <laughs> popped up in the video and it was, it was really funny. Luke Duncan shared it. Uh, there's a bunch of pros that commented on it. Dave Mercer messaged me on Instagram and was, was talking about it, but yeah. So there's, there's the song. I think I'm going to start trying to do this since everybody liked it so much. Um, I think I'm going to start trying to get one out, you know, once every two weeks or something. See if we can still make them fairly funny, but, you know, try to stay middle of the road. Yeah. That yeah. kind of gets me into some more, like, some more things that's going on. Because we all on here try to get into a subject and all kind of give our opinions about things. But yeah. it just seems like, I don't know the whole Brian New situation. And none of us will ever know. But it seems like they can start picking and choosing what we get in trouble for. And it's not always in the rules or I don't even know how I'm saying what I'm trying to say here, but it just seems like if we can get in trouble for something like that, what's the next thing that somebody can get in trouble for? It, uh, like what you got to realize is that, that we're paying customers. It don't matter if you're fishing NPFLs, ABAs, yeah. uh, Bassmaster elites, Bassmaster opens, whatever, you know, the, the fruit jar, 
And at the end of the day, whatever the tournament director says is pretty much agree. Like, yeah, there's, there's no, you know, you can argue with it all you want to, but mm -hmm. you're paying for it. You signed up, you signed on the dotted line. I mean, you know, new said he did it. Uh, new, Brian, he's a great friend of mine. One of the best fishermen I've ever been around. Um, and hell he went, I think he went back and fished for the fish. Now, you know, again, what two people got upset, you know, him and Upshaw got into it or whatever, you know, I don't yeah. even know that Upshaw was, was super mad at him. He just did what he felt like he had to do. And, you know, you can't blame a man for any of that. So yeah, it, it, it gives us something to talk about, but at the end of the day, Brian's a hell of a fisherman. Upshaw's a hell of a fisherman. They're going to go to the next tournament and yeah, it, it, you know, we're not going to think about this two weeks from now. Yeah. Unless I keep singing that song. <laughs> You know, that uh, on on this very subject today, literally less than three hours ago, I pulled up on two bedded male fish and blew out both beds within 10 minutes. Me and my son caught both of those fish. Yeah. It, it, that whole, oh, he blew out a bed. That's somebody that wants to whine about something because they can. That is all that boils down to. I mean, mo most of them that you find, you roll over top of anyway. At least yeah. I do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so in the NPFL, we know very well that if we have a problem like that and we see something like that, we we talk uh, with each other on the water. Like, we, we, hey, you shouldn't have done that, dude. You know, we deal with it right then. You don't see a lot of people turning in anybody because it's dealt with right then. Now, if you're breaking the rules, right. like, you know, you know, hooking them outside the mouth on a bed. You broke the rule, right? Something needs to happen from that. But if you see something that you just rubs you wrong, like, don't you think just fishermen to fishermen, we should deal with it? I hate to say it like a man. <laughs> I mean, you would think so. But, uh, you know, there's always going to be the, the ones out there that want to start something because they think somebody slighted them. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems well, like can... it just seems like lately bass fishing has been a lot of drama. A lot of drama lately. Yeah, I feel like and and the the bad part is is you're giving a platform through social media. You're giving a platform to the vocal minority. The, you know, we used to we used to say that people, you know, general society lack of information was why people were stupid because <laughs> yeah. they, they didn't, they couldn't get the information. Now I literally, I've got the world at my fingertips. There is no reason not to know any question. I don't care if it's how to rebuild a jet engine to how to tie a FG knot. There's nothing you can't figure out on that phone right there in less than 10 minutes. And people are still idiots. <laughs> and they said and, and they they've been uh, being allowed to sit behind a keyboard and not get hit in the face. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so you know, don't even fix that kind of stupid. <laughs> no, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, I I feel like there's always drama. There's always going to be people fussing and complaining. But you know, I've fished tournaments for 20 years. Um, I've never had a bad altercation with another angler nor have I seen that many on the water. You know, you hear about people here and there, but, you know, it's not, it's not like this is something that's happening all the time. Um, plus, I mean, let's, let's face it. It makes for good TV. It makes, get a bunch of people talking about it. This is, this is why the, the news is, <laughs> is so crazy is because everybody wants there to be drama. Oh yeah. Well, I had a situation and I, I can't tell y'all if this guy was in tournament or not. That was the problem. Harvey and I talked about this because I couldn't tell you, but I was going into a creek. I had a co-angler with me. I just fished the Bass Nation qualifier on Arkansas River. And I was going into this creek and there was this older man fishing in this triton right smack dab in the mouth of this creek. And I said, hey, I'm just going to go to the left of you because I'm going to idle to the back of the creek like miles into the back of this creek, right? Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to where the fish are. And he just gets mad and starts saying all kinds of stuff, throwing up his hands, throw down his rod, just gets pissed. And I'm like, I'm going where the fish are. Sorry. And I'm I just I'm going way back there. Well, he ends up cranking up when I start fishing. He cranks up. 
goes all the way to where I'm at, goes in front of me, goes all the way down the side I'm fishing on, turns back around and comes back the same exact way and then leaves. Like the no whole path where I'm fishing. And I'm like, are you freaking serious? <laughs> like, dude, come on now. You know, I didn't bother you. And that's one thing, everybody listening, you don't own a creek. If you're in the mouth of a creek, you don't own that creek. Is it your name? I mean, you don't own it. I'm just saying, Harvey, but, it just. But what, if, but what if my name is on it? Oh, it's not your last name. So if it was a Harvey Horn Creek, you know, it, but even then it's, it wouldn't matter. If it's, it, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter. It, even then, it, if you're in the mouth of that creek, you don't own that dang creek. Freaking scoot over, let us by, or we'll we'll gladly slowly go by. Yeah. And like I did, you can't ask Harvey, you can't run where I was at. Oh, no. You had to idle because there's boulders and stumps everywhere. So, and that idol was a real slow idol. So, yeah, it, it upset me. And, you know, I was trying to figure out, well, I don't know the guy's name because he did not have on a jersey. I didn't look at what his numbers were on the side of his boat. You know, I, I really couldn't say a lot other than what kind of boat he had and what the dude looked like. And so, you know, I could have, I Harvey said what he gave me his opinion on what I needed to do about it because, I didn't I don't understand how people can be so freaking rude. I don't I don't get it, but I don't know. Well, how many how many days have you fished and how many times has that happened? That has actually happened to me twice in all my years. I mean, it just you know, twice. Again, it's it, it it leaves a really bad taste in your mouth and you'll remember it forever. Oh yeah. But at, as far as it, you know, it just don't happen a lot. No, it doesn't. Usually people are really respectful of each other. You know, they may say like, hey, dude, you're too close. I can throw and hit you or something like that. And you kind of back off, whatever. Usually you can deal with it right then. But to crank up your boat and go all the way down the side I'm fishing and turn back around. And even my co-angler said something a whole bunch of times. He kept on talking about it throughout the day. He was like, yeah. man, that was bull. Because it was just, it was ridiculous. It was acting like a freaking two-year-old. Yeah. And... It's just, come on, you know, if you got something to say, say it. I promise you, I can deal with it. So, hey, deal with it like a man. I can deal with it like that. Can you? <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. So, I'll, I'll tell you a great one on Harvey Horn. Um, Harvey Horn did me about as good as anybody has ever done me in a fishing tournament. So, we're fishing open in 2022 at Cherokee. Mm -hmm. um my first year fishing opens um had a really bad first tournament like really bad and uh get to cherokee and have a pretty rough practice but i found a few fish um go fish the first day pulled up on a spot had like 15 pounds by 8 30 cold up kind of through the rest of the day wound up the day in 15th 16th something like that had almost 17 i'm like holy cow this is my second you know triple a level event like the second day is a lot more pressure than the first day after you've caught them um so i had like three spots that i thought i could get bit on um and i knew that one of them was really good because there was a fight on or a fight or something on the water in the back of a creek oh like, well yeah yeah there was there was there was a lot of words said there wasn't any physical altercation but there was a lot of words said but dude got kicked out, like got DQ'd for acting a fool, whatever. Yeah. Um, kind of the same type deal apparently your guy did. So he, uh, that I knew that spot was good because I talked to the guy that got kicked out. And he was like, man, they DQ'd me for, you know, I was boat racing the guy back in there and we were cussing each other and they, and they threw me out or whatever. I don't know exactly what, yeah. what happened, but I'm like. We'll go through all that once you get done. <laughs> Just, but that's, just, that spot's a dang good spot, right? Yeah, just to clarify. Yeah. So, guy, guy sat on my, like, set 100 yards away from me, watch me catch them all on day one. Uh, obviously, boats, you know, boat numbers flip. And I get there, he's sitting on my spot on day two. Again, like, is what it is. I pulled, you know, 100 yards in front of him. I was, it was a big, long point is what it was that I caught them all on. 
I pulled in front of him on the flat. I caught some back in there too. Like fourth cast, I catch a four pounder. I'm like, all right, we're going to be okay. Run everything else that I had. And at 10 o'clock, I had one four pounder. So demons are crawling up my back. Like I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm like, well, and from where I was, I could kind of see the back of this Creek where, uh, these guys that got into it, that was my kind of my third best spot. So I don't see anybody back there. So I run all the way back there and I sit down and here's a skeeter. Like he's not going, he's not fishing where I am, but it's a really narrow channel going back 200 yards to where I want to go fish. Well, as I set my boat down, this guy hollers at me. He's like, don't even think about it. I'm going back there. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, but like, I can get along with anybody. I'm pretty laid back, easy going, whatever. So, so I idled on up and, uh, I saw it was Harvey and he had been an express the last year. This is the first year I think he was running a skeeter. And I had met him in the lithium pros booth at the classic the year before. So I rolled up. I said, Hey Harvey, man, it's Ben Ballou. I met you at the classic last year in the lithium pros booth. He's like, Oh yeah, I remember you. I was like, dude, I had almost 17 yesterday. I've got one four pounder. I really want to go back here and fish this one spot. I was like, <clears> if you <throat> let me get back here. I'll leave. You know, if you don't want me to go fish it, I won't fish it. You know, you, you were here first. He's like, get on back there. I was like, okay. So went back there, ended up catching three, um, three pretty good ones. You know, I'm like, well, I've got some more, you know, kind of got cold on me. Got, I'll go run some new water. So I come back out and I'm like, dude, thank you. Is, uh, you know, is anybody else coming back here? What kind of, what's the deal? He's like, ain't nobody else coming back here, but you, I was like, man, you my hero. Thank you so much. Um, I was like, can I do anything for you? He's like, you got any Magnum jerk baits? So I pitched him a 110. <laughs> I pitched him a, a mega bass jerk bait and uh rolled on, couldn't catch anything else. I came back with like 30 minutes to go. Harvey's still sitting there. He's like, I ran four people out so they didn't get they didn't get on your spot back there. And uh I went mm -hmm. back there, ended up catching my fifth one with 10 minutes to go and weighed in and got paid um 32nd or 30th some, somewhere in that neighborhood uh had 14 pounds or something that second day but like that's how you handle stuff on the water could not have harvey like i've never had anybody doing that anything that nice so told harvey i was gonna buy him a beer i really hadn't saw him to buy him a beer since then but at least we can pu thank publicly thank him yeah yeah so going into what happened on day one in that particular spot there was not a boat race. There was boat number one who was setting in the last turn to get to the very back. Yeah. And he was literally, you know, power pole down, anchored up, casting to that last little point. You can't go around it where he set. Yeah, it was super He's literally nice. crossways in the channel. You've got a drag bottom to get over the flat or go on dry land to get around. Uh, the person who got disqualified literally trolled past three boats. Well, five boats because me and Scott Pellegrin were sitting out on the flat just talking because we knew if we, where we wanted to be and couldn't get there. Um, but yeah, he, he literally told the guy, hey, I'm going around you to go fish back there. And dude in boat one said, no, you're not. Because you literally have to go across, you're gonna have to drag your the back end of your boat across the flat on the rocks to get back there, or you can wait until I leave. Oh no, I'm going back there. No, you're not. And there was words said, and finally boat number one pulled his poles up and trolled back there and started fishing. And he said, Now come on back here if you want to. Now that I'm already here, come on back here. And I, I mean, I literally witnessed the entire thing go down um, and in any of us, if we were boat one and we had the spot, you know, the back 40 yards of a creek, you know, in your boat one and you start there, that's that's kind of yours, right? Yeah. The way I look that's at cool. it and homeboy literally told him, no, I'm going around you. Dude was like, no, you're really not. But the, the co-angler that was in boat one recorded the entire altercation 
sent it to Chris Bowes. Uh, Chris reviewed it and talked to me about it because, I mean, I literally stayed and I'm like, listen, I saw the entire thing. Um, and dude is lucky because there are some people that if he had rolled up on them like that, he wouldn't have been, he'd, he'd have been needing somebody to call 911 for him. Yeah. Because it would have been that bad. So it's a, it's a, it, you know, not only is it a unsportsmanlike thing to do, and later on I talked to said angler that was disqualified, and he realized. He was like, you know what, I was in the wrong in that deal. Uh, because if I, I finally realized if that were me, I wouldn't want somebody doing that, right? Right. But, uh, yeah, not only is it unsportsmanlike, but it's you don't know who you're rolling up on. Some of these guys – you know, we've got guys that are out there fishing that are, you know, ex Navy SEALs, <laughs> special forces guys. You really don't want those people upset at you. You just don't. And, and Harvey, very, very bad for your health. It could be. And and if I had rolled in and was being a dickhead to you, that that would have went completely different. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, when you first rolled in there, you could tell by my attitude. I was like, "Wait a minute, you know, come on yeah. now." And you and and it was just handled the right way. You were like, "Hey, dude, I, I just I need I need one fish, or whatever it was." Yes. I you know gone. Which I yeah. had, I was catching them where I was at. That's why I was there because I yeah. had already been back there, was letting it settle down before I fished it again. Uh, but they, the first day I rolled up in there and practiced for that event, me and the co-angler, our best five goes 23 pounds. All and brown. All brown. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, oh my God, where did this come from? Yeah. I made, I made two casts on it and shook them off. Like I shook two off on two consecutive casts and I'm like, this is, and like I knew it was one of the big community holes on the spot on the lake. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. if you went, you know, you weren't one of the first couple of boats. Oh, yeah. Um, and you know, again, again, that's just that's how you handle stuff. If you roll yeah. up, if it, it, and I would, if if Harvey would have said, "No, nah, dude, I'm headed back there," I would have probably fished around in the creek somewhere else, but I wouldn't have tried to push him anymore. And like again, if you just communicate and you you're not a dickhead, yeah, you can. That's all it is. That's all it takes. Yeah, that's, that's with anything. Uh, Chris Schroeder is asking a question. Stephanie, honest question. Do you feel people treat you differently on the water, being a female, good or bad? Um, I'm going to say with the NPFL, because I'm in my second year, no, everybody treats me like everybody else. I'm going to say at the Bass Nation, I've had a few people that, you know, they, they kind of acted like I didn't belong there or they didn't know that I, I fished a whole lot. Um, and I mean, one guy asked me, do you need to be out here by yourself? You may break a nail. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, are you serious? And then his, no offense to Yamaha, but his Yamaha would not get him off the bank. And I asked him if my Mercury could pull him out because I got off the bank easy. But now I just come back at him. I mean, for the most part, 95% of the time, everybody treats me like everybody else out there. But then you always have that 5% that likes to ruin it for the rest of them. But I don't care. I'm just gonna go out there, work hard, improve myself. And if I beat you, I'm sorry. So no, you ain't. Don't be sorry. No. Now you know what I mean, but just <laughs> yeah. You know. yeah. Yeah. So you fish, you fish the last bass nation, correct? I did. Yeah, I did. Um, so like my ultimate goal is to mm -hmm. fish on the elites. Like it's what I wanted since I was 13 years old. Um, you know, started the college team at UT Martin. You know, I've, I've always wanted to fish the the elites. Like that's that's what I've always wanted to do. And the the crazy thing is, owning a fishing television show takes up so much time that it's hard for me to go out and fish as many tournaments as I want to. You know, everybody's like, "Oh, hell, all you do is get to go fishing all the time. That must be great." And I'm like, "Well, it's it's awesome, but I have worked harder the past." four years that I've been a part of this fishing television show than I ever worked in the insurance business or hell when I was farming. Um, 
you know, it's just, it's owning a business and it's, it's a business. I don't care if it's a tackle shop, a boat dealership, a whatever it, it's still a business. And, you know, you've got to make decisions and you've got to figure, you know, you've got people that rely on you for their salaries and, and all this good stuff. So, you know, I'm right now I'm hopping around, I'm fishing some Toyotas, I'm fishing Bass Nation stuff, kind of a long winded answer, but you know, I'm fishing, you know, fish the opens. I, I want to fish the opens, but I can't devote. I got a 14 year old and a three year old. Like I just can't spend an additional nine weeks on the road when I'm already gone 13 weeks filming shows. Then there's another nine weeks. Well, you're at 22. Then you've got the classic. Then you've got ICAST. Then you've got sponsor stuff. Then you've got all this other stuff that goes along with it. And at that point I'm gone, you know, more than half the year, 28, 29 weeks. And I just can't do that with a young family. Um, so I'm fishing, fish the Bass Nation at Ufala. Um, may end up going to the, Miss, the upper Mississippi, kind of figuring out if I want to do that or if I want to fish the northern Toyotas. But but really what I'm trying to do now is put myself in position to where I have been to most of these lakes. Um, you know, I, I fished an event in event or two in Florida. I fished, you know, a couple of events up north. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to get myself experience and I'm getting my teeth kicked in That's at a bunch I'm of these places. Too. But eventually I'm going to get it, you know, it's all, it's all going to start making sense. I'm 10 times a fisherman. I was when Harvey and I run into each other two years ago. Uh, but yeah, I fished, fished at Ufala. I uh, missed the, missed making the championship by six places and I only weighed in four the first day. Oh, wow. So that, uh, I was pretty, pretty upset leaving that one, but I mean, you know, I fished a pretty good derb, um, kind of did it the way I like to do it. And, you know, it just, just didn't work out. Um, looking back, you know, you can always talk about your decisions that you make, but this was one of them that I, you know, looking back, I'm like, dang it, I should have done this or I should have done that. But you can always do that looking back in the, in the moment. I don't hate my decision making. And that's what it's all about. Like there's Harvey, you, you fished at the, at the top level. Um, you know, Stephanie, you're fishing professionally right now. Like it's not everybody at that level can flip a jig. Everybody at that level knows what a fish looks like on a live scope. Everybody at that level can throw a spinner bait or throw a drop shot or do all these things. Everything fishing wise is between them ears. And that's correct. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of doing the same thing that you're doing right now as far as, you know, yes, I do fish the NPFL and I plan on staying there. But see, I don't care about making the elites. I, I know everybody's saying they re they're ready for the first female, first female, and it's always talk all the time, but that's not my dream. That's never been my dream. My dream would, I'd lo absolutely love to make the classic. I think that would be amazing. Like that would be like the tip top best thing I've ever done, you yeah, know, and that would be almost, that would be almost with anyone, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm happy doing what I'm doing, but I'm trying to fish everything I can right now. Harvey knows this trying to fish everything I can to get as much experience under my belt that I can get, because it's not that I can't fish it's I need the experience fishing all over the place because it's like the Arkansas river, you know, you get out there and you think, well, you can, you can catch them off the main river. Well, mostly where I found the fish were in the backs of the creeks in six inches of water and you couldn't even see six inches. So you would see a stomp and this is where my 360 really played a big role. You would barely see a top of a stump, but then you could see on your 360, well, there's a fish sitting there, but I can't physically see it with my eyes. And you think they would not be there, yeah. but they were there. They were there every single time. Matter of fact, on day two, so on day one of the tournament, I lost a four pounder and I swore up and down she was on a bed, but I could not see her, could not, you know, visually see her. So I go back on day two and catch that fish off that same exact stump. And, you know, it's just you don't realize how shallow these fish get and how it's so different from river to river and the clarity of the water. What was really weird to me is going down, you know, one lock like you're going to Kerr, but not all the way to Kerr. There's two creeks on, I think, the left hand side when you're going south. One, I think, was called Clear Creek and one was called Muddy Creek or something like that. I'm telling you, the first creek was so clear you could see the bottom. And it was cold, like 52 degrees. 
The next creek was like 62 degrees and you couldn't see two inches. Like, is that not crazy crap? It was crazy to me because I said, you know, I, I don't definitely don't want to fish around here. So I marked that off pretty quick because it just no consistency whatsoever. I need consistency. I want to yeah. find something consistent where I know how to catch the fish and stick to it. And not that clear water crap. That was not, no, I don't even think there was fish in there. Not in that creek. Because I was uh, swimming around if they were, there were. The, the old adage about a bass is a bass is a bass is kind of true some of the time. Yeah. Like the way you catch them at Lanier or Murray, let's say, uh, let, let, let's throw spots out of it. Let's just talk about largemouth. The way you catch them at Lake Murray, you can't catch them like that anywhere else in the country. The way you catch them, you know, largemouth in, you know, some of these lakes around here. You know, I live in, in Middle Tennessee on some amazing lakes like Old Hickory. Um, the way you catch them here, you can't catch them anywhere else like that in the country. Like, I mean, it, they, they change. A bass is a bass, yes. But what they do, what they set up on is all dictated by their surroundings. Yep. And their surroundings are so diverse when you start fishing across the country. Like they just act so much different in different yeah. places. And people don't realize that. I mean, I can take what I learned from the Arkansas River and apply it to other rivers, you know, in my future. Because, you know, a lot of people don't think they live that shallow, but they do. They live that shallow all times of the year. That's what they're used to. They live in the mud, yeah. you know. And the difference is they like, I think Harvey made, somebody said it. They want to go up and down. They don't want to move out. They want to go up and down. And, you know, so if the water goes up and down, they will just move up and down with it. Right. But they're, they're used to that, but everywhere you go is different and you got to learn that. So it's like kind of what Ben was saying. He wants to go all over the country and fish. You get that experience on, let's say Grand Lake. Well, next time you go to Grand Lake, you at least know a little bit about it. You know, you have that experience there. So I'm, I've, I've said this a lot on this podcast, but Dakota Ebear told me a while ago, you fish as much as you can possibly fish, enter everything you can possibly enter. You're going to get your teeth beat in, but one day, all of a sudden, it just clicks. And you know, that doesn't mean you're not still going to lose, but you're going to continue to do better. But you're going to have to learn how to get your teeth knocked in and learn from, you know, what the people did that won. Learn what they did. Learn from the people around you. Learn from your mistakes. Yeah. Wow. yeah there's no there's no other way to do it. I mean, again, Harvey, you fished, fished at that level. Other than putting that much time on the water, there's there's no other way to do it. When, yeah. when we went to the St. John's in 2019, Quan had won there in 2018. So – me being me and never been to, you know, I'd been, I think I'd been to Florida. No, at that time I had not been to Florida fishing other than one guide trip uh, on the, the, uh, uh, on Toho. So I get there first thing. All right, let me go down here and see what that was that Klon was fishing where he won the tournament. I get down there. There's nothing. There's no grass. There's no nothing. It's bare bottom. It looks like you scoured it with sandpaper. I'm like, huh? Okay. Well, I know all this is grass, and now there's no grass. Uh, where are these fish going to go? So I look. There's a row of docks. Well, there's nothing out here for them, so they're probably going to go over there. So I literally go and start fishing the docks. And uh, fish about the third or fourth dock and come out from between two docks. Don't call it seven or eight little, you know, 10, 10, 12 inch fish, little bitty fish. Here comes Klon around the dock coming to me. Mr. Klon, you caught him? Nope, little ones. Okay, fair enough. Well, if he's not catching anything big and I'm not catching anything big, something's not right. So I'll leave and go across the river. First matter of grass that I find, I flip into it, catch four and a half pounds. Hmm, light bulb. Okay, they're under these mats over here. They're not on those docks. Well, day one, I had made my mind up that I was going to go somewhere completely different because I had caught a six and a five on Crescent Lake. So that's where I'm going. 
I'm going to put all my eggs in the Crescent Lake basket. Uh, didn't do anything. I think I had two fish on day one. Of course, I did fall in the lake and probably fractured my leg. <laughs> but after that tournament was over, somebody asked me, how did Clun beat you in that tournament? I'm like, uh, experience. That's what allowed Quan to beat me in that tournament. The experience and the knowledge, knowing that those fish may not be there today, they may not be there tomorrow, but they might show up on Thursday, was what beat me in that tournament. Because I was there. I practiced the same area that he won in. But the experience and the knowledge of him knowing that those fish were coming is what got me beat. Yeah. Um, Matt Dillon uh, is asking, what do we think about the expo in Oklahoma? Uh, what it could it have been better than last year in Knoxville? Could they have done it better? I personally think that um, they could have done a little bit better, but under the circumstances with the way it lays out, it's kind of, uh, it's not really an open an open venue like we've got in Knoxville to go to. So there's not really a park or anything that's right there beside the venue where they could do a drone show or anything like that. That's, that's the only thing that holds Oklahoma back is they don't, they're, you know, they're right there in downtown. Everything's kind of, you know, closed in with buildings compared to Knoxville. Hmm. Hey, what, what's the next tournament for the uh, world fishing tour? Harvey table rock. When, when is that? May. Let me see here. Get the old calendar out. Is that the non live scope deal? No, no, okay. this is, this is a team event and oh, yeah. yeah, you, you pay per day. Meaning if you don't, if you don't make the cut on the first day, you can pay to get in for the next day and you can keep paying as long as you want to, to try to get in before the cutoff. And then they have a championship day. May 18th. Really? So yeah, Harvey and I are fishing that as a team. Unfortunately, I'm MIA some because I'm, I'm a little busy. So but I don't know. Can I, I, can I be at that one? I think you're going to, one of the NPFL tournaments. Oh uh, yeah, I'm at Hartwell. I'm yeah. at Hartwell during that. They are done. Yeah, during that time. Yeah, I actually got into ABA for this weekend on Rayburn. I guess uh, it's hard for me to idle for very long <laughs> and not do anything. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go play around with that a little bit this weekend. Yeah. So. What's the, uh, what's the next gig for the fat rascals? So I don't know that we have, we have booked, you know, we, we may end up going to Europe, do a European tour. Um, Harvey, do you know the fat rascals? Do you know what? I, I've, I've heard it, but I don't know the whole story behind it. Okay. So Luke Duncan and a good friend of mine, Shannon Wheeler have been playing music together for, three or four years and last year at the classic you know luke does his low budget live party and then he and shannon played well they got me up on stage you know after everybody got pretty drunk and we sang had a big time and then luke and i've hung out a few times so this year i text him i'm like hey if you're gonna do this you need a bass player he's like yeah so fat cat newton named us luke duncan and the fat rascals we played uh, at the hunt club on Saturday night at the classic to, I don't know, there's probably 250 people there. It was, I heard it was packed. It was completely packed. Like couldn't get to the bathroom, couldn't get to the bar packed, but had a blast. Uh, so much fun. Had the, uh, the lead guitar player, Ryan Engelman from Turnpike Troubadours, which is one of my favorite bands. Oh it was, man, yes, one of my favorites too. Yeah. I've been listening to them, you know, forever ago, uh, okay. before they, before they really blew up. And, uh, so he was there and like just phenomenal. I was just trying my best to to keep up, but we had a blast. Luke's a bunch of fun to 
to play with. And, you know, he's got a, a huge following of very loyal fans and it was, it was a bunch of fun. So Luke Duncan, I am a fat rascal. Luke Duncan and the fat rascals is what fat cat Newton named us. So, um, no, we, we're not hardly ready to, get to to go overseas yet, but we'll probably, I, I don't know for sure next year at the classic. I don't know if we'll get together before then or not, but it was, it was a bunch of fun. Y'all come out and watch us. It's, it's always a lot of, a lot of fun. I guess one of these times we will make it to one of the after parties, but what happened is, is we got to the house cause we were staying about what, 25 minutes away, Harvey, something like that. We got yeah. to the house and we sat down after walking around all day and we That's never left that up. spot. That's we never left up. that spot because I was going to get dressed and take the hat off and you kind of get dressed up. No way I'd know who I was, you know, that type of situation. And we were going to go back out, but we all kind of looked at each other. We're like, uh, -huh. I don't know. I'm pretty happy right here on this couch. Yeah, I think I was heard that people couldn't get drinks there. Because I had talked to somebody that was there, and they were like, you couldn't even get drinks. It was so packed. Like, yeah. it was like one drink per hour situation. The uh, the people there were were like, well, we we didn't hire our, you know, we we told our cover band not to come in. I hope y'all bring some people. <laughs> Luke's like, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they ended up having to go back and get more beer. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. I so hate that was, we missed it. It was a lot of fun. A lot yeah. of fun. So Matt Dillon saying, Stephanie, do you really think that Garmin will come out with LVS 36 that you posted? You know what? I think they already pretty much have it in salt water. Um, but I'm sure it's it's coming to that. The great, I mean, some of that I think is AI. I really don't think I just don't really think that it would look just like that. Because no. it doesn't even look real to me. But no, that, um, didn't they come out on April Fool's Day? Yes. It, it possibly could have, but I, I basically said, you know, hey, take my money because I'm oh, telling yeah. you right now, if it actually looked like that, that, yeah, just take my money. It'd just be that quick. Harvey, on the other hand, would probably go without it forever. Well, you forget, I had the first version of Panoptics. So I was ahead of y'all way before all this. No, no, I'm just saying you just don't like using any of it. And 27s. I had the first version that they ever brought out. You just don't like to use it. No, I don't. It's, exactly. It's, That's what I'm getting at. You just don't like it, using it. I, I I catch fish with it, but it's not my favorite thing to do. I like to fish more than I like to hunt. So it has become something that I have learned to really enjoy. I actually enjoy it now. It, but it was refreshing going to the Arkansas River and actually just fishing. Like, it was refreshing. I enjoyed that much more. But, man, I enjoy live scope, too. It's fun to me. It's it's a challenge. It's a challenge to see a fish because no matter what people think, you don't always catch everything you see. You got to know how they're sitting if they're even willing to eat. Well, it's you know? running I mean, the sport. It's running the sport. I it know, all, right? It all depends on what color feathers you have tied on to that weighted treble hook. <laughs> Those help a lot. You Those can help. catch every fish that swims as long as you got the right colored feathers tied on your treble hook. I promise you. It, uh, nah, like, you know, we were talking about experience and, and that kind of thing. Um, and you look at, you look at a guy like Trey McKinney and yep. You know, everybody's like, oh, Trey's just, you know, he's 18. Trey has been fishing exclusively since he was 10 with mm -hmm. one of the best fishermen in the country. Mm -hmm. Um, Trey, you know, you talk about experience. Trey has already been to all these places. Not only that, Trey is spending two weeks at most of these lakes pre-practicing. Like, and live scope, you know, Harvey, you show up at a place, and, and I'm guilty of this too. You show up at a place, and you're like, these fish should be doing X, Y, Z. What, don't matter if you're St. Lawrence River or if you're in Florida. These fish should be doing X, Y, Z. Live scope has now taught us that should should never be in our vocabulary. Mm -hmm. You look at guys like Trey, Drew Gill, Robert G. Um, what's the other guy that's sponsored by 44 that's killing them right? Tyler Williams. I mean, if you truly understand live scope, um, you it it 
it takes years off of your, what you need from experience wise. Yeah. I mean, you can go back to the first open that I fished on Cherokee. Uh, Maddie sat out there and, uh, you know, caught him off the bridge with live scope on a chatterbait. You know, that was six years ago. Yeah. Uh, this is not, everybody's talking about, oh, these kids, these kids. These kids has been coming for a long time. It's just, this is the youngest batch. Right. That have all made it at the same time. You know, ever, every year before we've had, you know, throw in one or two guys in their 40s. David Williams, myself. You know, there, there's been some guys, some older guys that have got in prior to this past year. That was just the youngest batch of kids we ever had come in to the right. Elite Series at one time. Uh, but, you you know, you, you still, if you look at who qualified or who finished in the top nine, uh, you know, was, was it Coda? Anyway, the Japanese cat. I can't remember what his name is right now. Uh, you know, th that's a guy that's been around for years and years. Kenta, yeah. Kenta Kamara. Kamara, Kamara, Kamara whatever it is. Um, yeah, Kenta is has been around for a long time. Uh, finished in the top nine, but he was already there, so he didn't count. But other yeah. than him, what, Milliken was the oldest? Yeah, I think so. So at, at 35 or 32 or whatever, how yeah. old he is. Yeah, not I very mean, old. You're talking from going from guys that are in their late 20s to their 40s to a batch of young men that are in their teens and early 20s, save one man. Come on now. That's just how good they are. They're I that mean, good. You take their live scope away, it doesn't matter. They're still going to do good. I don't know. Some of them, some of them, some I don't them. think. To a I, I'm not going to say all of them would do good. I'm going to say the majority, 75%, would still do good. But a lot of them, some of them, if you take that away, they're blind. No. I mean, not they're, at that level. I, not at that level. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'd like to see that. I promise I'd like to see you. Because we could took, argue about it all day long, but none of us really know. If you took the Elite Series right now. I say uh, no. Perfect example, the tournament they just had. Take all live scope out of the situ out of the equation. Which one are the, you talking about? Which the grand? The one at Lanier. Lanier. Oh, oh. the no live scope deal. How many? Oh, the, the no live scope. Oh, yeah. okay. Both the Johnston brothers still finished in the top ten. Come on. It, it doesn't matter if they've got it, they don't got it. They're that good. I fished against them. I can tell you they are that good. Yeah, yeah. It, really, it really tickles me when these keyboard warriors get on here and they're like, oh, yeah, well, so-and-so, well, he just can't catch a bass. He's not that good. Like, you don't understand no. how good these guys are. Yeah, they're no. good. No. It's you, like, you don't want them in your Thursday nighter. Uh -uh. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to take your lunch money. Every one of them. Every time. Yeah, the worst I, the worst on the elite series is going to be 95% of fishermen. I will I will them. say this going to that, and I'm not gonna even say who it is, whatever, but when the best fisherman in the world just did not do very good on his home pond, and so they're not always good. I mean no, they're no 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 well, no and you know what I mean. You're gonna but, have your moments that you're gonna absolutely absolutely suck, things are gonna change. And it's that's just fishing. how it goes. It's still you know? fishing. Oh, yeah. But, it's still fishing no matter what. But on a day in, day out basis. Wow. Yep. Agreed. Trust I agree. Me, Jason Christie's taking more of my money than I'm ever going to take a <laughs> few. Hands down. The first BFL I ever fished in my life, the co-angler that was fishing with Jason literally had enough to finish second on the boater side. <laughs> I come in with two fish that weigh nine pounds, and you know I'm like, uh, you know, I'm probably, pro if I'm lucky, I might finish, you know, maybe in the twenties. I finished ninth. 
with two fish with not you know they were two big ones but right. jason had five fish for 17 pounds and his co-angler looks at me and he's like how'd you do i said i just had two for nine he was like that's good uh do you, do you fish hard all day i said yeah well jason made seven casts and i'm like huh wait a minute what yeah, he pulled up on one spot, made seven casts, put his last fish in the live well, pulled a trolling motor up and said, all right, let's go see if we can win any of this tournament. <laughs> yeah. People, I hate people like that. No. I ain't never done that my whole life. That was uh, like 2000 and probably 2008 when that happened. And, you know, Jason ain't got no worse. You're right. right. You know. uh, I don't think you ever really lose it. I think you may go through some slumps, but, you know, if you know how to fish, and this this is to the old timers too, because I know we got some keyboard warriors out there that will say, we're facing sonars the devil, you know, stuff like that. But, hey, to each their own. If you want to use it, use it. But you got to take the time to learn it. I mean, bottom line. And if you want to compete these days, unfortunately, you better get good at it unless you want to go fish a tournament that is no forward facing sonar period. A really, a really good friend of mine. Uh, his name's drew Boggs. One of the mm-hmm. best fishermen I've ever been around. He's qualified for all Americans. He's fishing the, uh, uh, the tackle warehouse invitationals right now. Like I think he's got 50 top tens in FLW events has won some regionals like dudes, a hammer anywhere he goes. And I asked him one time when I first got to know him, I said, Drew, what is it that makes you so good? And Drew, and Drew's a flipper, like a shallow water guy. He said, I make more casts and I make more flips than everybody else. It is nothing but pure efficiency. That's all it is. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that, that makes a lot of sense. And it changed how I tried to fish. Mm-hmm. Well, efficiency is the name of our game. You, a man flipping a bush that he does not know that a fish is there can never be as efficient as a guy staring at a screen, looking at a fish, knowing that every cast he makes is on one's head. It, it's, it's physically impossible. Now that guy's not always going to win because I don't give a damn what anybody says. You can't catch them all. There's fish out there that I truly yeah. believe are uncatchable. Oh yeah. But they're not all going to eat. No, no. If live scope has not told us anything, it's there's a lot more there than, than we originally thought. And they don't all eat, but you can never, the reason it's, it's taken off so much. And it's, it's probably the most powerful tool that we've ever had. Uh, I feel like probably side imaging was the most powerful tool that we've ever had. You know, when it came out and uh, what would that have been? Oh, seven, Oh eight, something like that. Um, you know, it, the guys that latched onto it first beat everybody else's head in. Now, fishing offshore is not a big deal because everybody's got it. Everybody sc- scans them. Like the the fish will uh, end up in the in the next few years, and I feel like you're already seeing it adjusting to all that pressure. Um, but you know, for the time being, it it's still the most powerful tool for being efficient that there is out there. I think. Well, apparently we have a video that someone's wanting to play on here. I don't, I don't know um, what video it is. I've got some buddies on here, so it may not be appropriate. Who knows? Yeah, I don't. Uh, we're, 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 we're not. Already did. We're not concerned. <laughs> oh, no, he there already was. showed it. Apparently. Never oh, mind. Okay. I thought it was some good juicy stuff. No. I'm a little disappointed. Gotcha. I wasn't looking at my text, apparently. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> okay, well, uh, somebody was asking for, do you have one more song that you can sing? Probably not. Probably, I, I, well, I'm, I'm only good for one. For okay. One okay, yeah, Chris, um, I tried. I tried, we'll dude. Have, we'll have to get you back on when you get your next one out. Yeah, yeah. I'm I, I'm, I'm working on one right now. Me and Anna's working, up, working one up. Um. Uh, probably probably be out sometime next week but i'm gonna try to kick one out you know randomly with with the the stuff going on in fishing and again just trying to be funny like everybody's so dang serious 
Like, let's just let's just chill out and have fun. It's fishing. Yeah. Let's make, let's make fun of each other, make fun of ourselves, and go fishing. True. I uh, just to kind of say one more thing because I know this was said on Luke Duncan's podcast uh, when Watson was on there. Yes, I was supposed to be on a TV show with Watson, Dudley, and Poche. Um, we were all supposed to be doing that. I do not know what ended up. We all have signed contracts too. I do not know what ended up happening with all that. Watson probably knows a lot more than me. I've heard stuff, but yes, I was supposed to have been doing that. So I have gotten text, phone calls. The only people close to me like Harvey and just the people that I'm really close to knew I was supposed to be doing this. And so a little let down that we're not going to be doing it. They were supposed to be following me around all season. It was kind of, if y'all watch y'all, if y'all are golfers and watch full swing on Netflix, it was going to be like that. And so it was going to be really cool. And you're going to get to see a whole nother side of fishing and you know, but it's not going to happen now. So there we go. And I want to tell you, Ben, thank y'all for having me on. Well, I was about I, to say, I'm, I'm sorry that your series got canceled, but you did get to fish I with Charlie did. on Fishing University. And we beat y'all so bad. There, yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll take it and, and say you beat us. Hey, and I know, I know why you made that look just then. And that was not me. You need to ask him. <laughs> that was not me. It was like legitimately the most amazing day of fishing. One of the most Dude. amazing days of fishing yeah. I've ever had. It was insane. We Dude. had so much stinking fun. But I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all right now. Oh, Charlie never touched a fish. He never touched a fish. He Somehow, make you take it off. I took the all. every Harvey does that to me, too. I get stuck doing that for Harvey as well. Like, I net. I take it off and then I have to start fishing again and then he'll catch another one. And no, I didn't get, I, he, he did not kick my butt. It wasn't, it was not like that. See, I boat flip. I yeah. boat flip. That's what I was doing. It's just boat flipping. I was having a good old time. And then he would be like, he wouldn't, even, oh no, he wouldn't even tell me he would have one on. He would just play with it until I figured it out. And then Okay, I'm getting the net, Charlie. Okay, well, I'll take the hook out. Are you going to kiss it? Come on, got to kiss it. I'm not kissing that fish. Oh. I'm like, okay, well, I'll kiss it for you, you know. Anyways, yeah, it was, man, it was a it was a great time. Like, the people that we had there was amazing people. Oh, amazing. Some veterans better. there. And, you know, it was it was just an amazing time. And the place that we were staying at. What was the, the hunting club called? The ben? Grove Hunting Club in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Probably one of the nicest places I've ever stayed. Yeah. Like, it, it was super nice. I, I don't even know how many rooms were there with bathrooms in every room. And it was just, it was just cool. Like, I wish, I wish they were all that awesome, but they're not. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we literally brought you on the best one. Well, I, I enjoyed it. Man, I hadn't caught that many four and a half and five pounders though in one day like this lake this private lake was packed full of them yeah, it's, and those it's guys in american sport fish know what they're doing and it it's just yeah. insane when so when i i do want to say something about that and kind of give them some props if you do want to you know if you have a small lake you know whatever and you want to grow your fish they are some really good people to get with and you can, you can talk about them for a second, Ben. So everybody knows. Yeah. Uh, the company's called American sport fish. They were the ones that pioneered the tiger bass where they crossed the Northern strain with the Florida strain. Um, and you know, the, it's owned by a couple of guys, Dr. Sean McNulty. He's got his doctorates and fisheries management from Auburn. Um, and then uh, Sawyer Child is is his partner, and Sawyer's a great, great guy also. Um, but they're the ones that are putting, you know, the state's call. You know, Oklahoma wanted to put Florida Strange or whatever in Grand Lake or, you know, whatever. They're the ones that the state's call. I think they're shipping, you know, a million and a half uh, fingerlings. And, you know, they they forgot more about fish than, than we know. But they've got locations. Uh, they're ba based out of basically Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, I know they've got a, a location in East Texas somewhere over there uh, as well. But they can do everything from, you know, 
engineering and building your ponds um, to, you know, stock supplying the fish, shocking them up to make sure everything is there. Uh, I'm going to do quite a bit of YouTube stuff on them. So y'all check out the Fishing You YouTube. Um, we're going to go down there here in the next couple of weeks and like watch them actually pull the, the spawning mats up. Um, you know, I, I get to fish in the, the brooder ponds. That's, that's always pretty fun. So it, uh, yeah, it's, they're great guys, great company. Um, yeah, y'all check them out. It's American sport fish. Also, please don't forget about y'all's fantasy bass fishing picks. We have to get that done by tomorrow evening, right, Harvey? Correct. And so do y'all have a group? I should get in. We do. Yeah. You need to join the group. So the top three at the end of the year get to go on a guided fishing trip with Harvey, Chris King, Greek, or myself. And so first place is going to get to choose who they want to go with. But we're all going to do try to do this trip at the same time, kind of make a little tournament you know boat, yeah. boat tournament you know out of it so it's it's gonna be super fun uh bass hub podcast fishing group so go join it and uh hate to say it boys uh i'm coming back so i'm making my way back on up there storming back oh yeah i sure am i sure am the classic helped me a whole lot and harvey's like in dead last <laughs> Some people are real good at fishing. Some people are real good at fantasy fishing. Part. Well, I forgot to pick the fifth angler. The first two around. But even with him picking his anglers, it has not helped any. So, yeah, but anyways, right. well, we appreciate you, Ben, so much for being on. Um, yeah, it was great having you on. Great getting to know you as well. And definitely listening to music. Cannot I cannot wait to hear your next song. So yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank y'all for having me. Anytime y'all need somebody, give me a shout. I'd love to, if, yes, if there's one thing I like more than fishing or as much as fishing, it's talking about fishing. So heck yeah. Heck yeah. Well, all of you have a blessed night and we'll see you again next Tuesday. Thank y'all.